A bird does not know it is beautiful. It just is. Neither does a flower know its beauty. It just is. The sun does not really rise. Neither does it set. There is no high tide and low tide. Even though I use these terms, I now know they are illusions. For something to be beautiful means something must be ugly. These are deceitful observations that I have learned since birth. The law of duality. One wanders to the left, another to the right. Both are equally in error but are seduced by different delusions, horrors. The law of duality states that all things have a pair, and each pair has an opposite. For example, heat and cold appear to be opposites, but they are simply two ends of the same spectrum. Put another way, there may be two sides of a coin, but it is still only the problem with the law of duality is that it forces us down a path of absolutes that can be so limited. We start to think that one view is better than the other. We restrict our ability to learn and grow. Experiences are not good or bad. They are just experiences that we can only hope to learn from them all. Lessons we take away from life's journey are what makes us. I know I must rise above the law of duality. All it is is an illusion created by my two eyes and my brain's ability to organize my experiences into labels and descriptions. The only way to truly see anything or anyone is with your heart. For with our eyes, we can never capture life's true beauty. It is when we can look through this different lens that we can truly appreciate the beauty in everything. Why with my heart? Because that is where the Creator, the universal power, or God, lies in wait. How do I perceive with my heart? I go within and focus on stillness. I catch my breath concentrate on being here right now. I become one with myself. Living from the heart means realizing and accepting the essence of my being. It's not just seeing life unfold like a movie. I'm responsible for everything that unfolds before me. I'm the creator of my reality. And everything I see on the outside was first seen within me. I am what I believe in. And my beliefs make up who I truly am. But it's important to remember that beliefs aren't facts. They're merely perspectives that can be altered with new information. So I choose to keep an open mind to all possibilities. Life isn't just what happens to us, it's how we perceive it. And with this perception, we have the power to shape our own destiny. We have all heard the expression that God is love. I come to know that what I choose to call the source is irrelevant. For I speak the true name with every breath I take. And that within me, where I find my divine peace, divine joy, divine happiness, and divine abundance. This is where I find love. And the challenge and choice that I have is do I choose to live in the world or live from my heart in love? To live in love is to be a light to the world. To live in love is the way to know the true essence of all things. Remember, in order to be able to give away love, one must first receive it. Not just any kind of love, 
but unconditional love. Love that is based on no conditions. Only pure love. Unconditional love does not acknowledge imperfections. Instead, it celebrates excellence and beauty. It refuses to hate, judge, or go to war against anyone. In the eyes of God, we are all equal without question. Since childhood, I have made a habit of placing labels and boxes around everything so I can recall them later. But these labels fail to capture the essence of anything or anyone. Instead, they serve as judgments by the world regarding us. However, these judgments ignore the presence of the Creator, which lies within each individual. What makes me who I am? The world says I'm a man, a brother, a father, a husband, a friend, a writer, an entrepreneur. All of these have an impact on my ego, the mental part of me. But it's important that I gain control over my mind and body, rather than allowing them to dictate my life. So again, what makes me who I am? My parents gave me a name at birth, but that doesn't provide any insight into my identity. The world has influenced my view of reality, with labels and lots of societal history, signs and symbols. So, who am I? For me to know and understand the nature and essence of my very being, I ask and it is given. Who am I? I am creation awakening. What do I do? Behold, I make all things new. The law of resonance states that the rate of vibration projected will harmonize with and attract back energies with the same resonance. The law of resonance teaches me that I am one with God. With the heart of love for the world and humanity, I can become an open vessel attuned to the things around me. When I put aside my ego and quiet my mind by finding love in everything and not being attached to anything, I tap into the power of creation. Fears dissipate as old illusions dissolve in my presence and dualities fade away. When I embrace this divine connection with love, I am able to rise above duality of both a single, united whole, and an individual expression of divine feeling that I am. Our hearts were born to joyously declare our connection to existence, and the recognition of our unique frequency in the realm of God I am. When I find the moment of presence, I tap into the source of divine holiness. I am bathed in energy and light that is pure and perfect. When I welcome this blessing, when I am aligned with this now moment of miraculous life, there is nothing to mend or conquer, nothing to feed from or alter. Because of the present time within God's fear, all which isn't of ideal goodness has vanished. No trace remains. Let's say it in a different way. When you come to this place of an open heart, when you accept love unconditionally and receive your identity as a reflection of God, when you let this love guide you, then your inner ego is non existent. Your subconscious mind does not exist in the present moment or beyond time. However, we are here for a reason, to bring all parts of our being into alignment with the purpose of God, which is love. 
we are ready and eager to answer the call of love that pulses through us constantly. We are living in a momentous period of transformation, and our hearts will be more full than ever before. Just remind yourself that you have what it takes to make this journey. You have been devoted to the cause and can now allow your heart to love its own self-image. Rise to a higher level of perception and open your heart to God the Creator. Signal that you're willing and prepared to accept whatever comes your way. As you start to reach out to tenderness, Acknowledge the truth that love is always present, even when it seems young. Surrender yourself to the ground of your heart with heartfelt gratitude and appreciation. Your companion on this journey.